Now, I've just collected an awful lot of data. And what I've learned is that I actually have confidence in only a couple of these measurements. First of all, the weight measurement, I have tremendous confidence that that is a very repeatable measure. Secondly, ogive to base measurement using the Hornady comparator kit I think is also a very good measurement and, and it's very repeatable. Some of the other measurements though, the overall length, you'd think is really simple and I alluded to that earlier. Uh, there is a little bit of difficulty to ensure that that bullet uh, is set properly in the jaws of that micrometer, that caliper. And if it's not, if it's a little bit cockeyed, a little bit catty wumpus, now we're really getting into some uh, complex and technical language. But if it's not perfectly square on that caliper, you're not getting, or I'm not getting, a reliable, confident uh, measure that's repeatable. So I really don't like that measurement as well compared to the uh, base to ogive measurement. And then when we flipped it around, and I'm trying to put that meplat against the opposite jaw, that was really a difficult measurement. Because what's happening is that that bullet almost has to be, almost has to be crooked uh, for it to hit the other uh, jaw. So I really don't have too much um, faith in that. And then of course the calculation of bearing surface length using that methodology, two of those measurements I don't have much confidence in, don't have too much confidence in that calculation either. Um, and so the two measurements that I'm really going to be focusing on are the weight of those bullets uh, and the base to ogive measurement. So let's look at the results. Now starting with the 224 bullets, what we'll see is that the weight, I'll start with the weight because that's the first measurement that I did, uh, the weights uh, are pretty darn consistent. They're all varying by uh, essentially by a tenth of a grain save for the Burger and Lapua and I think that Burger and Lapua are actually owned by the same company uh, today. I'm not sure of that but that's what I've, I've read. But anyway those those Burger bullets it's amazing uh, I didn't weigh 200 of those bullets uh, but I did weigh a sample of 10 of those bullets and every one of them was exactly 70.0 grains uh, on that uh, match master scale that I'm using by RCBS. Very, very good scale. Now, of course, bear in mind that not all of these bullets were 69 grain bullets. The Barnes and Lapua were 69 grain bullets. The Berger and Nossler were 70 grain bullets and the Hornady was a 68 grain bullet. When we look at the ogive to base measurement, we see that the Hornady bullet is the most consistent in its length. And here I'm looking at the standard deviation. And the Lapua and Nossler were also quite consistent. Barnes and Berger having the most inconsistency, but we're only talking about two thousandths of an inch standard deviation. The Nossler bullet was the longest base to ogive, followed by the Hornady, then the Lapua, Berger, and Barnes. Now you'll notice that I only sampled uh, 10 of the bullets for this part of my test. And uh, I was then wondering, as I was doing all these measurements, I was then wondering, well, is 10 really sufficient to capture the variability, uh, the true variability in these different bullets? So, uh, as you'll see, I, I actually weighed 10 more of the Barnes bullets. I, and I am comparing those now to the 200 that I previously uh, weighed. And, you know, they're, they're really comparable. There is a difference though in the median and mode of those Barnes bullets where I, when I weighed the 200 samples 
uh, we did capture, I think, more of the true variability. But we didn't do really too bad by just doing 10. We did capture the same standard deviation and the same mean. So that's very good. And I think we can have some faith uh, in these numbers that we're looking at. But the other thing that I noticed when I was doing all these measurements, you'll get to look at these bullets really close up. And uh, there are some fairly obvious differences in the shape uh, and more or less, if we call it the character of these bullets themselves. Let's look at the Barnes to start with. This again is that Barnes 69 grain match burner. Very accurate uh, bullet for me. When I look at this bullet, uh, we see it. I can detect the bearing surface length just by looking at it now. Um, it has a fairly good sized boat tail and a nice smooth uh, ogive as well as a moderate sized meplat um, open tip. Now we're going to look at the burger. This is a 70 grain burger bullet. Very shiny, very shiny. Um, perhaps a longer boat tail. Definitely a longer boat tail. And a much more pronounced start to this ogive shape uh, or the, the tip of the bullet. And a very small open tip on that bullet. Let's look at the Hornady bullet next. You know, in many ways, it looks pretty similar, uh, just immediate appearance, to the Burger bullet. Slightly shorter bearing surface length, that's obvious just by looking at these, and a very small open tip on that meplat. And you know that Hornady and Burger is so similar looking uh, just by glancing at it, you really got to kind of study it, make sure you don't get them messed up or mixed up uh, in these different boxes. The Lapua Scanner L is much, much easier to differentiate, mostly because it has a stamp, the Lapua stamp, on the base there. Uh, but we see a fairly pronounced start to the curvature of that bullet, a fairly large bearing surface length, or bearing surface, and, uh, you know, a, a nice boat tail on that bullet. And the one that is probably the most easy to discern is the Nossler, I guess, uh, because it is a tipped bullet. And, uh, you know, maybe the reason why this bullet does shoot so well, I was just thinking of this, is because it is a tipped bullet. It's the only one of the bullets that I'm testing that is a tipped bullet. And it could be that this uh, tipped meplat simply improves the consistency as that bullet uh, is flying and then gives me better precision. It has a very long bearing surface and a very short boat tail. So in many ways, it's a very different bullet than all the others we're looking at. Now for my 308 bullets, I did the same types of measurements, uh, but I also did some um, rather extreme sorting. What I did is, of course, I sorted by weight, and then I also separately, independently, sorted by that ogive to base length. And uh, I'm going to be shooting those to see if either either weight or ogive to length uh, measurements really make any sort of difference. What I've also done, though, is I took some of those previously 200 weight sorted bullets, took just one subset of those bullets, the 168.1 grain bullets, uh, and I then measured the base to ogive of those. And I then sorted a whole new set. So now I have 
a set of bullets, about 20 bullets uh, set aside, that are all exactly the same weight and exactly the same base to ogive length. Now, that level of consistency, is it going to matter when we fire it at the target or not? I don't know, and I'm very excited, actually, to see how that's going to pan out. And once again, you know, qualitatively looking at these bullets, it's kind of interesting on how these all 168 grain bullets, how they differ. Here we have the very sleek and long, long looking, that's for sure, burger bullet. The Hornady. Now this is a tipped bullet. Nice looking bullet as well. Very nice long boat tail on it. The Nosler Acubond 168 grain. You know, this one has a very long boat tail. Uh, and again, that uh, it's a tipped bullet. I really like the boat tails because they're so easy uh, when we're doing the bullet seating. The spear target match. If that burger bullet was a long and sleek bullet, this one might look a little bit more like a shorter, chunkier bullet, I guess. And lastly, certainly not least because it's doing so darn well for me, the Sierra tipped Match King. Kind of an intermediate length boat tail on this one. And of course, a tipped bullet. You might recall earlier in the video, I mentioned that Burger Bullets posts all different sorts of measurements for their bullets. I think that's fantastic, and I really wish all the different uh, bullet manufacturers would do that. But they don't, but Burger does. And I thought this was a good opportunity for me to compare their measurements, their specs, versus my measurements. And there's a lot of numbers, a lot of data here, so I've written things down a little bit. But I've uh, been able to compare then the Burger 70 grain 224 bullet uh, against their specs. And um, really what I was interested in is the overall length, base to ogive measurement, and uh, bearing surface length. And uh, I was able to do that then, obviously, with both the 224 bullet 70 grain uh, and the 308 bullet, that's a 168 grain. Now, what's interesting uh, is, of course, the specs will have certain tolerances to them, and so we'll see slight differences. Not too much, though. Really, the difference comes in at about the hundredths or thousandths uh, of an inch for overall length, and uh, at about the hundredths. Uh, for the base to ogive measurement, but the uh, what's interesting is the measured um, bearing surface length. That's and what I mean by that is that is where I uh, scribed the lines on the bullets with the um, sharpie and then measured with the micrometer, the digital micrometer. Uh, that is actually showing quite a bit of difference in the tenths uh, of an inch. In, uh, in both cases, both the 308 and the 224. However, when I calculated the BSL, uh, they were much closer, and specifically, much closer for the 224. Now, um, nothing was exact, and of course, there are tolerances to how Berger makes their bullets and all that, uh, but I thought that was uh, kind of an interesting opportunity to make those comparisons. And you know, we have just talked about an awful lot of different ways to measure and ultimately then to sort out our bullets. And the one lesson learned here uh, is that even if we're talking about you know, 68, 69, 70 grain, very, very similar in weight, 224 bullets, or we're talking about 168 grain, 308 uh, bullets, um, by looking at all these different variations in the measurements, it's pretty darn easy at this point to see how one bullet can perform very, very well in one rifle and not so well in, an, in another rifle. That difference may be due to bearing surface length, 
base to O drive, the length of the boat tail. And another thing that I'm also thinking about is it may have something to do with the, the balance point um, of those different bullets. And we'll probably talk about that later on in the season. Well, what we're going to be doing next time on Extreme Reloading is I'm going to be focusing on these Barnes 69 grain match burners and I'm going to be firing some groups with the sorted bullets we worked on in this episode. Uh, specifically, we're going to take some very consistent bullets and fire those from both my Tavor rifle as well as my son's AR-15. And I'm also going to take some purposefully inconsistent bullets and fire some groups again from those same rifles. And this will help us answer or at least understand if these measurements and these variations that we're seeing in these bullets really make a difference uh, in the group size and the precision of our, uh, of our groups. So, look forward to seeing you on our next episode of Extreme Reloading. Thanks for watching.